Hi guys, welcome to the video. Hope you're doing well. I quite often get messages from uh, other builders and that asking if they can use a particular t controller for the foam cutting. Um, and I've, I've had that quite a few times now. So I thought it'd be useful to make a video going over the types of controllers, uh, in my opinion, you can use for four and five axis foam cutting. So five axis is a bit more advanced, but um, some of the controllers here will, will do five axis. So I've got quite an array on here, which you'll be able to see from the overhead of different controllers and uh, all of them apart from one uh, I've used, which is the little um, UNO and CNC shield, but we'll, we'll go into that and uh, I'll, I'll tell you why I, I don't use that one. Nothing wrong with it, it's just not, not suitable for what I want to do. So in this video, what we're gonna cover is the differences between a PC controller and a microcontroller and what I think is best, in, in my opinion, for uh, foam cutting. And then what we'll do is we'll cover each controller uh, with its, its benefits and uh, advantages. And then I'll put in some uh, video of them working. Uh, now I've got video of all of these working, uh, as a, apart from the little you know. Um, but I will set it up on the bench and show you it working. Um, and then what we'll do at the end of the video, I'll show you the this one here. So this is this is what I've been working on fairly recently and probably why there hasn't been that many videos out recently because I've been spending a fair bit of time on, on, on this one here, which is the SKR Pico running the, a Raspberry Pi uh, CPU, uh, and which is 32-bit. So, uh, and I'm gonna do a whole video on that. Um, still got some testing to do on it, but that, that's to come on the next video. And then what I'll do is I'll go through my recommendations, you know, depending on, on what you're after and what your school levels are for going into foam cutting. So what we're going to do in this video, guys, is discuss the difference between a PC controller and a microcontroller. Now, I've got two examples of PC controllers on the bench here, and all the rest are microcontrollers. Now, the main difference being is that a, a PC controller generates all the step and control signals and sends them to something like this. Which is an all-in-one controller. And this is the first one I ever started with. Or this is the same idea, but instead of having all the drivers on board, you can see on, these are all the drivers on this board here. This will have, uh, four separate drivers. I've only got got one here, so you can see. So this would then connect to the uh, all the drivers. Now these PC controllers here uh, are old parallel port uh, controllers, you know, from old parallel port machines. And this is what I first started with, and uh, the, the, they still work really well. You know, if if you've got one and it works, then there's no reason to change it. Now, all the rest here are microcontrollers. Now, the difference being is on the microcontroller, you have to upload firmware uh, to these for them to work. So if you've done any 3D printing or anything, you'll not, you know what that's about. But these don't need any firmware on them. Basically, all they're doing is they're just sending electrical signals to the various parts on the, on, on the board there. So, the signals are controlled by the PC. Now, when I first started, I, uh, I started with Mac 3 connected to this via parallel port, and I'll put some video up of it. Uh, I'll be showing this probably going back over 10 years ago now when I started doing this. And uh, and that's what I started with. And now, the benefits of using a PC controller over a mic controller is that a PC controller is more versatile. So when I when I first started, I'll, I used to have this connected to my foam cutter, and then all I did is I changed some cables over. I had a quick uh, um, changeover system where I used uh, uh, LAN cables and I had a, um, uh, a connection on the side. I'll, I'll put a picture up and show you that. And so all I used to do was change the configuration file, and then I was CNC routing then, and, uh, and that's if you, one of the most popular videos is how to use Linux CNC, and that's that's what this did. So it was all done on this little controller here. 
So the thing with the microcontroller, something like the little uh, Arduino or uh, we've got the ramps board here with the Arduino Mega or this is another another setup here. This is the Arduino um, uh, Mega ramps board and this is running Marlin firmware with the LCD. So I've got videos on all these so I'll show them as, as well. The difference with these is the firmware you put on them is particular to the tasks you're doing. So um, to change over to using uh, one of these for CNC routing or laser cutting, you would have to load up a different firmware. Probably based on the same firmware, but you would have to load up different firmware with different settings and everything. Whereas on this, uh, here, you would just quite easily um, swap it over. Now, the other main difference for these is that this setup is probably a lot easier using any of these controllers here. These controllers here, you can either be using Mac 3, Mac 4, uh, or Linux CNC. Um, and it is quite a lot more involved in setting them up. Um, I've got videos on the site showing you how I did it. And uh, I mean, I enjoy doing it, but if, if you're not that much up on it, then I would probably advise you not, not to go for these, but go for these. But if you've already got one of these, and you've got an old parallel port computer kicking around, then they're still a real good option, you know, nothing wrong with them at all. So the different boards we've got here, we've got the Arduino Uno, we've got the uh, Arduino Mega. Now this is the first one I started with on the foam cutting um, on the USB side. Um, then we've got the Marlin setup, which is basically the, the same as here, but it's running different firmware Marlin. That means then you don't need to have a computer connected, but it, it is a bit more limited in um, what you can see in you know configuration. Um, then we've got this one here, well these two here are very similar. Uh, this is the MKS Gen L board. Uh, this is the version one, and this is the version two board. And uh, basically all these are is one of these in a single package. So it's an Arduino Mega and the ramps board in one package. But the, the beauty of it is it will take 24 volts, which for uh, hot wire cutting is an advantage if your wire is going to be a bit on the longer side. So if you're thinking of building a, a, you know, some fairly big wings on the foam cutter, then I'd, I'd probably advise you to go for the MKS. So, so that gives you a flavour of different type controllers. So what we'll do is we'll go in and we'll have a look at each one a little bit closer and what the advantages and disadvantages are. And then I've put you a little bit of a demonstration up showing you it working. So this is the Arduino Uno with the CNC shield on. And the, I've connected it up. I've put one stepper driver on and connected it to one of the motors. I've only got two spare motors at the moment. Um, and I've connected it to the power supply. Now the power supply is just here. We just out of shot. Bring it over so you can see it. So, so the power supply at the moment is supplying 24 volts. Now the CNC shield will work from 12 to 36 volts. Generally, stepper motors work better with higher voltages. So when you see get onto some of the bigger machines, they're running quite high, you know, 36, 48. So now it's nice and small, but one of the disadvantages of the um, of the CNC shield, it doesn't have any hot wire control, so you will have to uh, implement some hot wire control. You can send a signal to turn the hot wire control on and off, but you will you would have to have something separate for that. So that's the only disadvantage. But a lot of guys like to run their own uh, separate power supply for the hot wire anyway, so it's not a it's not a major issue. Uh, now, as far as foam cutting goes, with four axis. Um, the only firmware that will work with it is Dev CNC foam. And uh, so I've got Dev CNC foam on this uh, laptop and you will need a license to run Dev CNC foam. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna plug in, so it's, it's already plugged in, um, switch the power on. So it's not taking very much at the moment. Uh, what's this side in it? So these have got all my licenses on, you know, which is a, means I can just swap computers very easily. 
Now it started off in emulation mode because at the moment this hasn't got the firm, firmware on. Now this is one of the advantages of dev CNC foam. You don't have to worry about putting firmware on. You just plug, plug the machine in. And what you'll see it happen, if I go into settings and I select the controllers, the drop down list there. So we've got Arduino Uno, CNC C Shield 3. Um, it's on COM9 and then we'll auto detect. Right, so com lines right. So it says check port and firmware. So what will happen now? It will go in and check the board to see if it's got the right firmware on. It says I found the the right Arduino Uno CNC Shield three connected at com four. It looks like the so with any luck. Now which port am I plugged into here? I'm not sure which one that is. So let's uh, see if we've got any movement. So uh, so we're connected to this. Let's take that pointer out. In fact, let's let's go to to this motor. Yeah, it definitely feels like it's work because you can the motor is is locked. So that, that's a good indication of it, uh, of it being power there. So uh, which one's it gonna be? Oh, that's Y. X, so it's saying X. So if we go to X, uh, depending on it's X. So let's just try it on this one. Oh, there we go. And you can see that's, that's working really well. So, Dev CNC foam is the only one that I know that will work with the uh, the Uno and the CNC Shield. Now these are really cheap. Um, it's got the DRV8825 drivers, and so you will ne need to match them to your current. Uh, so on my previous videos, I'll, um, on the Arduino Mega and that, I'll show you how to do it. It's exactly the same process. So basically what you need to do is make sure you've got the right amount of current going to the stepper motor. If you've got too little, it, you might not get the steps, but if you've got too much, um, you could potentially either um, burn the windings out on the motor, which is it's not likely, but it, you know it's not good to run them too hot. And then if you run it too hot, you need extra cooling for the, uh, the drivers as well, because these drivers are limited to the amount of current they can take. So that's why you can really only use Lima 17s on there, you know, you shouldn't really go much more about about two amps with really good cooling on these. So uh, and generally better, cooler the better uh, with electronics. So that's the Arduino Uno with the CNC shield, and it's a nice little setup. And the the only other problem you've got with it is that you can only have end stops on. Uh, I think the horizontal access axis, so it won't support four end stops. It's mainly because the, the memory is limited on this. You know, it hasn't got as much memory as the uh, the uh, Mega Twenty Five Sixty. So, uh, but you can see it, it it works a treat. The firmware that was generally the first time I installed the firmware. I actually had a little. Um, I've been playing about with oscilloscopes a little bit, and on this actual Uno, I had some software running a, a little oscilloscope. So. It just overwrote the firmware and you can see it works straight away. So that's one of the benefits of uh, Dev CNC foam. It's generally very easy. I mean, there would be a few more, <coughs> a few more settings to go in and check, but you've got all the right pins and everything there and you can, got, you can reverse the motors quite easily. Uh, you've got your speed there. Um, so Dev CNC is really good software. Um, if anyone's interested, I will do a video on it, but I think the software is, 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 is good software and it's pro probably self-explanatory. So, you know, if you do want to see a video on that, you know, let me know and I'll, I will do one in the future. But to be honest, I, I, 
it, it works that well. I don't think it really needs one. And you know, unless you really want one, I'll do one. So, so that's the CNC shield. So what we'll do is we'll have a look at one of the uh, uh, the other ones now. So in this next section, guys, I thought what I'd do is I'd lump the uh, controllers based on the Arduino Mega 2560 uh, into one, because they're all very similar. Now, this was the one I very first started with, with the USB controller. Um, so basically what we've got here, we've got an Arduino Mega 2560, and this is a genuine one. <laughs> that one isn't. <laughs> And uh, on top of that, we have something called a ramps board. And basically what the ramps board is, is a way for you to connect the drivers and the power supply. And originally it's designed for 3D printers. So a lot of these connections on here are for extruders and heated beds. And, uh, and this setup works really well. Now, the only real disadvantage of this is that it's, um, you're only meant to run it on 12 volts. Now, people have modified them to run on a uh, high voltage, but it gets a little bit in, involved and, uh, you know, but, but you, you can do that if you want, uh, if, you, if you're quite handy with electronics. So this runs at 12 volts and uh, it's one that I've made loads of uh, wings and that on. It, it works really well. The software uh, is the Garble Mega 5X software uh, that runs on Windows only. And uh, I've been through a few updates on that so that that works works really well um, the next one is the MKS board and I've got two of them here one's the version one uh, you see, we've got the version one and the version 2.1 now the only difference as far as we're concerned for foam cutting is the location of the driver for the sorry, the location of the end stop. Now, as you can see there, there's a single wire going, going down to there, if I just point that out to you. On the MKS board, that connection doesn't exist. It's, it's reused, I think it's reused for the, because uh, this one will support um, TMC drivers, you know, the silent, silent step drivers. Um, but um, it, what I've done, I've got, I've got two sets of firmware, one for this and one for this. And the only thing this does, it uses what the XMAX pin uh, instead of the, um, the pin down there for the, uh, the end stops. Now, you don't have to use end stops on the foam cutter. Some, some guys don't. And all that happens is when you first start the machine up, it takes that as its uh, origin, you know, so it's zero, zero, and then you can work from there. So it's not a necessity to have end stops but it, it's quite nice to have them if you can get them working um, so that's the the two mks now the one we've got here this is if you have a look we've got the same ramps board as as we've got here the only difference is that we've now got the lcd control on now the main reason for this is and that there's a whole video on the uh, website using it and a few guys are using this this doesn't require a pc so it's based on the Marlin firmware, which you, if you're doing any 3D printing, you'll know that um, Marlin's extensively used in 3D printing. And, uh, and this I adapted to, uh, I had quite a bit of help from some clever guys on the, uh, GitHub to get it, get it working. Um, but this will work um, with just the LCD. Now it's not quite as configurable uh, and you don't get as much feedback from it. So you don't get any, uh, you don't get any indication of where the wire is like you do on the um, on the Windows uh, software so but it does mean that if you if you don't have Windows computers or you don't want to use Windows computers <laughs> I know some guys are not very keen on them then th this is an option you can use and it and it, it does work really well I mean I if when you see from the video um, um, that I did a, a while back on it it, it, it works just as well um, so I don't generally use that very much because uh, I'm because I've got plenty of computers and that and uh, you know and I don't mind which computers I use I use them all I use Windows Linux and Mac you know my theory is whatever's best for the job <laughs> so uh, so that, that works really really well um, um, potentially you could run 
run this on 32-bit uh, boards. You know, if you want to go into the Marlin software and uh, configure it, but you know, I've I've stopped at that. So that's that's the, what we've covered so far is the 8-bit boards, all based on the Arduino uh, Uno and Arduino Mega 2560. The, the, the big advantage of the MKS board is it will take 24 volts. So if you're thinking of building a, uh, some big wings and you, and you need a fairly long uh, hot wire, then you can power this via 24 volts, and that's the way I usually do it. And even though I don't need a long wire, um, I have it run 24 volts. And uh, you can then uh, use longer wires if you need to. The, the 12 volt one, up to about 39 inches or about a meter, it, 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 it copes okay as long as you're using very thin wire. But with the uh, MKS board, you know, you can use, uh, you can use um, a lot longer wire. Now the thing is, if you don't want to power the wire by the boards, you know it doesn't matter, you know, because the actual stepper motors don't need a lot of power. It's not like a, a CNC router where it's driving the bit through the uh, material. You know, all the hot wire is doing is going through the foam, and if if you've got that set correctly, it shouldn't actually be touching the foam. So there's very little load on a CNC foam cutter. So, uh, you know. That works really well, and I made I made quite a few models with that, and you know no problems whatsoever, and and this works really well. Um, the advantage of this one as well, it has external connectors, so if you do want to use bigger stepper motors like the NEMA twenty three, what you can do, instead of putting drivers in, you can connect the um, you connect the um, driver ups. So you would use the drivers like I've shown you already. So this driver here, uh, you would connect up to, to one of these external connectors, and then power it, and that means you can power it by a, more, a bigger power supply if you want to, because all this is basically doing is sending the signals. And uh, this is how I've currently got my CNC router working. You might have seen that on the, where I did the uh, needle cutter, the CNC needle cutter. So that's basically working with the, another MKS board, um, and it's got, um, four of these on. Uh, uh, even though it's a CNC router, the y-axis is driven by two. So, the, so that works That works really well. So that's one advantage. And all I've done on the, I've just loaded up different firmware. So whereas on the PC control, I could just use a different configuration. I then had to uh, put a different firmware on it. And, uh, but it, it works fine. So this is probably the cheapest way to get going and get the sort of most bang for your buck and and I would probably recommend that the MKS board is probably the one way to go but I know some guys in certain countries struggle to get hold of this board and so you know and I think the ramps might be a little bit more easy I've had a few guys in South Africa say that you know getting hold of these is uh, I think because their postal system's not not the not the best and the uh, you know it can be quite quite a long time before they actually get something delivered so uh, so that, that might be one reason to go over the uh, ramps rather than the MKS board. So that, that covers the boards based on the 2560. So what we'll do now is we'll have a look at the 32-bit boards. So guys, in this next section we're going to look at 32-bit controllers. Um, and you might say, why, why we want to use 32-bit controllers? For foam cutting, um, so far, I haven't really noticed any major differences in the actual uh, parts that are coming out. The, the main reason, I suppose, is future-proofing, because as time goes on, the, the older 8-bit boards will become more difficult to uh, get hold of. And I know in some countries, some guys are struggling with some of them already. Um, so that might be the way, um, that might be the, one of the reasons you, you, you want to go 32-bit. <coughs> now, in foam cutting at the moment, there isn't many 32-bit boards, but I can I can see there will be more coming along. So what we've got here, uh, and I've taken the top off the the hob build CMC uh, uh, the foam cut CNC, and and what we've got here, I've showed you earlier, we've got the SKR Pico, um, and the both 32-bit. 
a dog snoring in the background if you can hear any noises. <laughs> He's a bit of a noisy sleeper. So what I'll do to start with, I've got all these parts loose. I'll just take them out. So I'll take the fan out and take the power supply out. Now the power supply for the hob build is a 36 volt and that means you can use very thin wire um, and hob, hob build recommend uh, 0 0.21 millimeters uh, and w when I've used that in my testing it does work really well you know you get some really nice cuts with it and it means it's not burning a lot away you know you see some videos of people foam cutting and there's like a massive amount being burnt away you know obviously the wire is too thick or too hot uh, you know, if you want to get accurate cuts, you know, and especially when you're doing internal parts, the thinner the wire, the, you know, the better. So, as you can see on the uh, control board here, it's been very well made. Uh, I mean, I've done a whole video on this, so I'll probably link you to that. But just a quick overview of it. Uh, we've got um, DRV825 drivers in, and I think you can use the TMC uh, drivers in uh, standalone mode as well. So it's got the Arduino do do a uh, 32 bit board and then it's got its own hot wire control up here. Um, and I think there's a there's a pick controller on that as well controlling the hot wire, you know, and the hot wire control on this is fantastic. And you can either have it controlled via dev CNC foam. So you can actually control it from dev CNC foam or you can control it manually. So you can see there we've got uh, can you see that? Yeah you probably can't see that. Let's just let me just raise it up a bit there so you can see it. Yeah. So you, on there we've got a, a switch there that says um, manual automatic. We've got our on-off switch there, and then we've got a control there. But I'll link you to the video. I did a full video on this showing you it all working. So I'm not going to go over it too much in on this. Um, and you can see that the way it's made, it's, it's, been, it's been made really well. You know, the quality of it's really good. And the other benefit of it as well, if I turn it round so you can see. Get that one out of the way for a moment. Just hold that so it don't fall. If you have a look there, we've got five axes. So we've got the uh, normal four axis here, and then we've got the A, the rotary axis. So you can do five axis foam cutting. And it's the only foam cutter I know that can do five axis, uh, you know, with a rotary table, um, and you know, do proper five axis. So, in the in the video I did on this, you can see uh, they make a big chess piece. Uh, it's amazing when you see it come out. So, so that's that's the hob build. The only downside of the hob build is it's quite expensive, uh, but as you can see, you know, it, it is quality. You know, it, it's been very well put together. Um, and you know the, the the workmanship stands out. You know, Hot Build have done a fantastic job on this, and I should be making many more wings and fuselages on, on this. I was very lucky to be, uh, you know, uh, given this to review, and uh, you know, many thanks to them for doing that. It was basically uh, Stefano at DevCAD, who software run on this, um, paid for, paid for all the costs of this. So, you know, many thanks to him for that. Now, if that's too much out of your budget, um, then the other option we've got now, um, which I'm still doing some final testing on, is the SKR Pico. So let me just give you a close-up look on that camera. And the, 
this is a 32 bit board and this is using the uh, Raspberry Pi uh, RP2040 processors and you might have seen some of these on the I think I showed you this earlier I've got one on a breadboard here which I was doing some testing on I've actually done the initial development on this on the on the Pico before I actually purchased this you know because the uh, firmware uh, runs on this uh, just to say me out but obviously <laughs> there's nothing to connect it to so uh, but the initial tests I did on the uh, the Pico this is actually a Pico W which has got Wi-Fi on it um, so uh, potentially in the future there might be a way to do Wi-Fi on the uh, on, on the board as, board as well so um, this is running something called Garble How which is the the next iteration after Garble so it stands for hardware abstraction layer which uh, basically means it, it's a bit of a rewrite um, but it's included some other improvements as well so this is running um, TMC2209 stepper drivers which are actually embedded on the board and because of that it makes it a really cheap board I mean uh, this cost me £29 UK you know so um, that, that, that that's really good and the and it's got um, four axis on it uh, you can actually double up the z-axis because it's, it's mainly designed I don't know whether you've heard of it um, uh, in 3d printing there's a there's a big community uh, around building with something called Voron printers you know they're sort of self-build printers but they're meant to be like the best you can build and they mainly use something called Clipper uh, to run them and Clipper is some software that runs on top of a Raspberry Pi computer that does all the heavy lifting and the computing of the uh, the G code and then what it does it sends the signals to a, a board and the one that a lot of people are using now is the uh, the SKR uh, Pico and that's what it's mainly aimed at if you look on the SKR KR website uh, there's actually a special connector that will just connect it from here to a Raspberry Pi um, so during my initial testing when I was having a few issues I actually uh, connected it up to a, uh, a Raspberry Pi and, 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 and had it had the Raspberry Pi running it it was quite interesting actually so so I've still got a bit more testing to do on that so that should be coming in a few weeks time um, I've had to do some rework on the the software for it to to work but so far it's it's looking okay and I've done a few test cuts with it so I'll just get one this is an initial test cut I did with the uh, Pico and, and it's my usual sort of test piece that you may have seen you know if you've done any foam cutting before so that came out really well this was just an old piece of scrap piece of foam which had another another cut piece going in that way um, I think I had the wire slightly hot but I have been doing some kerf testing as well um, so I'll, I'll put a little bit of video showing you doing the kerf testing as well and the kerf testing is the amount of that's melted away by the the wire so if you can account for that you can get some very accurate pieces and um, I, I mainly use dev wing uh, foam to do that and dev wing foam has uh, options in there to account for the curve I don't think any of the free software has that you know as far as I can tell so uh, but yeah so that's that's been done on the the Pico so far and the cut looks you know really well this is just a piece of polystyrene although it's it's uh, sort of grayish in color it comes from our local Del Weiss store in the UK called B&Q and I've, uh, I've got quite a bit of this um, uh, probably got enough to keep me going for quite some time so that that's the SKR Pico and the uh, the Hot Bill 32 cut now if you look into Garble how on the Garble how website or on github there are other boards that are supported um, so you, you could probably um, use other boards but the only thing is you have to compile the the firmware for it and it, it the compiling the firmware is quite involved so um, you yeah, know unless you you really up on your computers and that I wouldn't get, I wouldn't advise going that route but you know this looks like being a real good alternative to the uh, hot build foam cut right guys that brings us on to the rec recommendations now really it depends on what you're after and what equipment you've got already so if you're just starting out I would probably recommend to go for one of the 
the the eight bit controllers uh, like the MKS, the ramps, and you know that they're very easy to set up, and uh, I've got it all very well documented on the site. If you want to go for the best, then the foam cut CNC from Hob Build is is uh, is the one to go for. I think. It, I mean, it's all um, comes complete. Basically, all you do is you plug it into uh, into your computer with Dev CNC foam, and like I did, like I showed you on the CNC shield, it detects the board, it uploads the firmware, and then you're working straight away. So, if you want really a sort of a plug and play solution with you know not too much um, uh, aggravation, then the foam cut CNC, and they they also do a foam cutter as well, so you can get the whole system from them. Uh, now, it isn't cheap, but it, it it is quality, and you know. These, this day and age is, you know, if you want quality, you, you know, you, you, you have to pay. So it is a fantastic option. Um, I probably wouldn't recommend the uh, CNC Shield uh, if you're just getting started, because then you've got the other option, then you've got to try and find some way to power your wire. So if you want something that's going to get you up and going quickly, then I probably wouldn't recommend CNC Shield, although it works really well and a lot of people use it. Um, but I think you're probably either better off going for the ramps board or the MKS board. And and probably the neatest solution is probably one of the MKS boards, either the 2.1 or the version 1 board over there. Now, if you don't want to use Windows at all, um, then the other option then is to use the, the ramps board here with the Marlin firmware and the LCD and the... And that works, that works quite well. And quite a few guys have used it. And uh, I've put some pictures up of a guy in South Africa that's made a fantastic looking board. And he's also incorporating a, uh, an automatic tensioner in the system using the load cell. You know, really clever guy. So, uh, you know, I'll put a couple of pictures up of that. And, uh, you know, let you know. Now, the other option you've got, um, so if you've already got a, um, a CNC router that's running something like this on a parallel port, there's no reason why you can't just put a different configuration on and get it running the uh, foam cutter, uh, get it running as a foam cutter. Um, and that, that works really well. So it really depends what you want. For future proofing, I would probably say if, you, if you're quite uh, okay with installing uh, firmware and software, then um, Providing I don't find any issues on this with some more testing, then this SKR Pico 32-bit looks a real good, real good option to go for. Um, but otherwise, these these boards here and all these boards here um, will run either the Gerbil software or, that you can get from the website or the Dev CNC foam software. Now, Dev CNC foam doesn't officially support the MKS board, but I have used it on here. And it has worked fine, but I haven't used it for any extended periods of time. You know, so just just be wary. So if you do use this and you go off to DevCAD and with some issues, they're probably not going to support you on it because it's not one of their listed supported boards. So, but to be honest, I I never found any problems. So, you know, it was probably going to be okay. So, so that's a roundup of controller boards, guys. So. I've hopefully found it uh, interesting. It gives you a bit more idea what's available and what you can use. And, and for 32 bits, you know, in the future, there's probably going to be more boards we're going to be able to use as well. So uh, uh, I hope you found it interesting. Thanks for watching. And I'll catch you in the next video, which is going to be on this SKR Pico, which should be in a few weeks' time, hopefully, uh, as long as I don't find any issues with this. I've got one little issue with the software which i think i've sold but i just need to do some more testing on it just to ensure it works okay so uh thanks for watching and i'll catch you in the next one